This is the second video in section 4-3. Uh, in this video, we're going to be covering conditional probability. So before we um, talk about conditional probability, uh, let's look at this notation. This is the conditional probability notation. And we've seen this notation before when we were talking about the multiplication rule, right? So this is read as the probability of event B occurring given, right, the straight line here is read as given that event A has already occurred. So it literally translates to the probability of B occurring given that A has already occurred. So this is P, B, parentheses, B, and then the given is, is the sign, uh, notation for given is the straight line and then event A occurring. So this notation is read as that, right, with that notation, which is that notation. Okay, so let's take, a, so a conditional probability is the probability of an event occurring given that another event has already occurred. So let's take a look at, um, uh, I have a, a presentation prepared. So conditional probability, so think about this. You're trying to guess a person's birthday Ignoring leap years, what is the probability you guess correctly? So uh, leap years have that extra day, right? February 29th, and we're going to ignore it. So what is the probability you guess correctly? Um, how many days are, are in a year? 365, right? So what you are thinking is to guess correctly, there's uh, there's 365, and to guess correctly, how many different ways can you guess correctly? Well, first of all, the denominator is 365 because that's how many different outcomes, uh, that's how many different outcomes uh, that which are possible, right? You can guess any one of the 365 days. But to guess correctly, you have one guess. That's if, that is, you can only guess, you would have to guess the correct day, right? There's one day, um, for that person's birthday. So the probability that you guess correctly, uh, you have one way to guess correctly, that's if you guess that day out of 365 days, uh, which is approximately 0 0.0027. All right, so let's look at a different situation. Let's say that you were given the following. So it says, what is the probability you guess correctly given that their birthday is in March. So what is the probability you guess a, that person's birthday correctly, given that their birthday is in March? Now, how does that change the probability? And the way we write this probability is, um, symbolically, we write it as P parentheses correct, right? Probability of guessing correctly, given that the person's birthday is in March, given that the person's birthday is in March, right? All right, so what you should be thinking is, okay, there's 365 days in a non-leap year, but I'm given that the person's birthday is in March. So I'm going to just concentrate and guess one of these days. So given that, how does that change the probability? So uh, what is your total number of outcomes now? So three, 31 days, right? 31 days because you know the birthday's in March. You're ignoring everything else. You're ignoring all the days in January, February, April, May, June, and so on. And you're only gonna guess the days in March. So that's 31 days, 31 outcomes. And how many different ways can you guess the correct day? How many different ways can you guess correctly? Well, one, right? One because that's uh, the person has one birthday, right? Each person has one birthday. So that's one over 31, which works out to be 0 0.0323. So this is a conditional probability. Conditional probability is um, the probability um, of an event occurring given that something else has already occurred. So let's look at um, let's look at uh, more examples. So let's go ahead and take a look at this one. So we have um, here we have a data we have data which represents the results of tests for a certain disease. We've seen these type of data tables already. These are called two-way frequency tables. And it's a good um, practice to add up all the columns and rows to get the totals, right? 
Okay, so if I've totaled them up already, and there's a total, uh, I've totaled all the columns and rows up, and there's a total of 300 results. All right, so question A. So question A says, find the probability of getting someone who tested positive given that they had the disease. So we're looking at the probability that the person tested positive given that they have they have the disease or had the disease. Okay, so similar to the um, the example we looked at earlier, the probability that you guessed correctly or guess correctly. So your your guess is correct, given that the person's day uh, birthday is in March. We in this example we concentrated on the March birthdays. So in other words, we ignored all the other months. We just honed in on March, right? We're going to do the same thing here with this problem. We know that the person has the disease or had the disease. So we're only going to concentrate on those who have had the, the disease. And that is this column right here. These are those who have had the disease. So in other words, we're going to act as if this doesn't exist. We're going to mentally blank it out. So essentially, we started with 300 results, but now we're limiting ourselves our space to 153 because we're only concentrating now on those who have the disease. Similar to how we, when we did the guessing the birthday, instead of 365, we knew that there's 31 days and we're only going to guess the 31 days and one of them was correct, right? All right. <clears throat> so uh, given that, the denominator here is going to be 153 because that's how many different um, outcomes we can get, right? Because that's how many people results had the disease. Uh, and of those 130, 153, uh, how many different ways can we select somebody who tested positive? Or how many different ways can we select a result that re was positive? Well, that's 134, right? So 134. And again, uh, some problems uh, are going to ask you to change that to a decimal and here I'm going to round to four decimal places five eight all right so that's how you do that problem let's take a look at the next one so the next problem says find the probability of getting someone who tested negative given that they do not have the disease okay so I'm gonna erase that because we're starting over so in this problem, we're looking at the probability that the person tested negative given, right? So test negative given that they do not have the disease. So I'm just going to put uh, not have for short. Oops. So I was writing that. So probability of negative given that they do not have the disease. So what do we know about this person? So we know that this person does not have the disease, right? When we write the notation, it's the second uh, event that we know to be true. So similar to how we were just concentrating on the March birthdays, we're going to concentrate only on those who do not have the disease. So in other words, we're going to ignore those who have the disease, right? So we're limiting our, our space to 147 of those who have it, who does not have the disease. And of those who do not have the disease, the 147, how many different ways can we select a person who tested negative? Let's see, tested negative, 130. Okay, so I'm gonna go through these fairly quickly. You can um, turn this into a, a decimal if you like. So let's take a look at the next one. So find the probability of getting someone who um, do not have the disease or does not have the disease given that they tested negative. So in this problem, we, we're looking at the probability of that the person uh, not have the disease given that they tested negative. Now, you might think incorrectly, well, didn't we answer that question in part B? We actually don't, didn't. So. These are not the same. The probability of event A, let's say negative was event A, given B, 
say that not have is event B, is not the same as the probability of B given A. So let's take a look to see if, uh, to kind of show that if that's true. All right, so uh, we know that the person selected tested negative, right? So we're going to ignore this row. So we're only going to concentrate, I apologize, I meant to say we're going to concentrate on that row, those who test negative, and we're going to ignore the positive results. So we know we've limited um, our space. Instead of look, working with the 300, we know that uh, the negatives only consists of 149. And of those 49, how many different ways can we select a person who does not have the disease? Well, let's see. Of those 149, does not have 130. So that's going to be 130 over 149. So again, they are not the same answers, right? These two are not the same answers, even though they're um, these two things, these two events have been flip-flopped. Okay, so um, for this one, I'll let you guys work this one yourself. Uh, after working it out, take a look on your uh, the notes available with my writing uh, to check your answers against mine. So hopefully you found that helpful. Again, as always, reach out if you have any questions.